So, this last Friday was Juneteenth, and if you're white, like me, this may be the first year you've heard of it. Weird, huh, that we keep showing up late to the party, and yet somehow that's not our stereotype. White people love to keep hitting the snooze button on our own history. Basically, Juneteenth is a day commemorating the day the last slaves in the U.S. were told that they were freed two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. I think white people all just run like those dudes in Chariots of Fire. Come on, white people, let's see some hustle out there. And if you're white, or like me, very, very white, you may notice that you not only weren't invited to the cookout, you can't even smell the grill. For me, that's because the county that I live in is 92% white. Oh, if you're from the South, a county is like a parish, but the only thing we think of when we hear Dixie is paper cups. Look around you. Is the crowd abnormally pale? Like Nancy Meyers movie pale? Well, you might be living in Canada, a yoga studio, or an improv class, or you might be in a white flight community. Basically, in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, a lot of white folks just back from the war in Europe looked around the cities that they were living in and noticed that their black neighbors wanted to be treated like people. And grandma and grandpa couldn't have that. They just fought Hitler over who can remember what. So they flew away and left the urban areas, in the civic sense of the word, to the urban people, in the Fox News sense of the word. Though, to be fair and balanced, it's not like white people just flew away the moment they realized that there were black people around them. It's like that old saying, if you can't beat them, intimidate them, lynch them, use redlining, the war on drugs, the war on crime, to keep them under an economic plexiglass ceiling, get out. So white folks took to the interstate and left for the suburbs, leaving the inner cities to crumble and decay. But only for like 50 years. Then the progeny of those white flighters could come into the cities and gentrify those neighborhoods that are now so full of potential. You know, those same properties that their ancestors helped destroy. It's like Netflix setting up a headquarters in the skeleton of an old blockbuster, which is not the same as blockbusting. You should look that up. It's terrible. That's what happened to my family. Happy belated Father's Day to my dad, who was living in a Bay Area town that was a mere 80% white and saw two POCs walking down the street, which, side note, I'm cool adjusting to the new terms, but doesn't it feel a little bit like POC is white folks figuring out a way to say colored people again? Anyway, my dad saw people walking down the street and got all worried about culture, so he threw the family into the Azuzu and moved to the milk toastiest place in the state. And so thanks to him, for a long time, I thought white was the default race. And everything around me confirmed that. TV shows, toys, Jesus. I mean, even the characters on Japanese TV shows were white. My world was so blanched that in sex education, when they were showing us slides of diseased penises... Which now that I say that, is that normal? Syphilis. Ew. Herpes. Ew. Gonorrhea. Gah. And then a picture that made the entire class scream that was of a healthy penis. It just happened to belong to an African-American model. So all of the kids in this white town thought it was the most diseased, which is fucked up. But really, if you think about it, way more fucked up of that teacher. So thanks to my dad, I was late to the party when it came to learning about black history and black culture. The president isn't the only one with a little bit too much bleach in his system. But I'd like to think that it's never too late to get to work. Now that you know about Juneteenth, learn more about black culture. See what else you can do to amplify black voices. And I do mean amplify, not just reposting memes or saying Yas Queen every time a Lizzo song comes on. Please note, I said amplify, not appropriate. There's a difference, Katy Perry. Though to be fair, that girl is from Santa Barbara, which has about as much respect for the culture it's built on as the Taco Bell dog does for the Mexican people. Also, be aware of tokenism, performative allyship, in fact, it might be best if you just put some money in the collection plate and pass the mic. Most importantly, don't feel bad. Or don't just feel bad. Do better. Feeling bad does nothing for anyone. The party that we're late to is not a pity party. Educate yourself. Read some Angela Davis. Watch some Ava DuVernay. And get to work. Better late than never.